Hello everyone, my name is Shun Jibril and welcome to the second video of my Adobe After Effects Basics and Tips series. Um, I hope you guys are coming from the first video because we did cover quite a bit of important information in there. And I hope you did learn a lot and that you've had the opportunity to put um, to test what you've learned that you've created some pretty awesome things. In this second video we're going to be covering some really cool stuff too and this stuff is just going to make After Effects a lot better for you because we're going to be covering keyboard shortcuts motion blur, the 3D layer switch, and pre-composing. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing on our list is keyboard shortcuts. Now, incorporating keyboard shortcuts in your workflow is really gonna make your use of any program a lot more efficient. Because with keyboard shortcuts, you can either do something like a shortcut for copying, or you can always go to edit, copy, edit paste or you can do the shortcut for it so in this tutorial we're just gonna cover um, a little bit of keyboard shortcuts that if you master them like your workflow in After Effects is gonna be a lot faster so I'm just gonna create a new layer new solid layer that we can work with for the shortcut and so let's talk about some of the basics so in the first tutorial we went over key framing with like position scale opacity but let's say you want to edit those and you don't always want to be doing this drop down well in when you have the layer click you can just hit P on your keyboard to bring up the position value and you can hit scale or you can hit S on your keyboard to bring up the scale value you can hit T to bring up the opacity value and you can hit R to bring up the rotation and that is a lot easier than always dropping down this arrow and finding it when you just need something for like like let's say you have a bunch of these layers you don't always want to be going to each one and just hitting up all right gotta find a position there's a position and you don't always want to bring up everything at the same time so you can just go and eventually bring a position for this our rotation for this one and T for opacity and that's just a lot quicker and let's say you want to bring up the uh, position for all these all these layers we can just go to the bottom one hit shift and select the top one and then hit P and it brings up the position for everything that's highlighted and T for everything that's highlighted or we can always do control A to select everything but if you just want to select a couple things I just hit shift click on the bottom one and shift all the way to the one so everything in between these bottom and top will be highlighted and now we can use those same commands to bring up the position rotation opacity A for anchor point S for scale and just a lot easier and so let's say we have set a keyframe for the position. So we already went over keyframes in the first one, so I'm just going to do something really quick for the sake of the example. Let's say I edit the position here and I want to apply this to the other ones. Well, what I can do is I can just drag in the timeline and highlight all these and then control C to copy the, all the keyframes that I've highlighted. And I just go into this bottom one. And let me change the color so you kind of see what I'm doing here. Um, fill. Change the color of this one to purple. I'm just gonna move it up top. So I'm just gonna highlight the keyframe, Control C, and I'm just gonna go in here and Control V and paste it. And now that position movement has been added to that. So that's another way you can um take keyframes and move it to other layers. So you don't always have to go in here and do individually what that layer does with the parameters. You can just copy and paste it. And you can do that with any keyframe, any keyframes you've set on any layers. So if I want to copy and paste this to all these layers, I can just highlight it and Control V, because I've already hit Control C. And now when I hit the hit P on my keyboard, now I see that all those keyframes, all those, that position animation has been applied to all those ones because I pasted it. And for other keyboard shortcuts, we can do Control D to duplicate or Control Shift D to split a layer, which can get really important when you just want to separate a layer. And Control Z is to undo, Control Shift Z is to redo. And if you're using a Mac, I believe the alternate to a Control key is Command. So whenever I say Control, you just do Command instead. So and Control S is to save, which is very important, whether you're using Adobe After Effects or not. You should definitely get into hitting Control S after you do something because you don't want to be caught where your computer just shuts down or maybe it 
freezes on you, the program crashes, you always want to get into the habit of Control S. That should be your best friend. So those are a little bit of the keyboard shortcuts. And U is to pull up everything with the keyframes, or if you double tap on U, it pulls up everything you've changed in that layer. So since I've changed the color of this and the layer that gets pulled up, and like opacity doesn't get pulled up because I haven't touched that value. So that comes really in handy when you're working in something but you haven't set a keyframe but you know you just have a long list of it. You just want to hit U two times to bring that up. Or if you just want to bring up everything with a keyframe, you just hit U once. And that goes for all your entire layers in your composition. So let's say I want to bring up all the keyframes in all my layers. I just hit U and every keyframe I've set. So if I had set a keyframe for the opacity that would have come up too or I hit U double time you twice double time you and everything gets pulled up that I've worked with in those layers since I have nothing highlighted so those are some really cool keyboard shortcuts that if you just integrate that in your workflow for Adobe After Effects like you'll be a beast with what you do so let's go into motion blur I'm just gonna delete all this so I'm gonna again I'm using my keyboard shortcuts I click on the top because I know that's what I want to delete and I click to the bottom and I know I want to delete everything so I just hit shift and I'm holding shift while I'm clicking it. So shift, click on the bottom. And I'm going to hit control X to delete everything. So next we're going to talk about motion blur. Now motion blur is kind of it's what's really going to add more of a realism to your um, animation. Because when something moves, it's not just sharp. There's kind of a blur to it. Because that's how the real world works. So like here with this position and position animation that we have, it's kind of boring because there's nothing. But when we turn on the motion blur switch right over here, so we see this little circle. It's like look that's it's like three circles that kind of shows the motion of it. So we turn that switch on, nothing happens. Why? Because our enable motion blur for all layers with motion blur switch on isn't on. So when we turn this one on now everything from this composition or this timeline in this composition that has motion blur will be visible in the canvas so we have this on and we have that on and now we see that it's not as jaggedy boring and it's kind of hard to see so let's kind of exaggerate it so you see the difference so I'm gonna start this here I'm gonna bring it in here and so you can see there's a motion blur with the movements and if I turn this off the motion blur is off turn this on motion blur is on and in that that just makes it more natural like yeah this thing is moving fast there's a motion blur boom boom so I like turning on motion blur for pretty much every layer I'm working with that has motion um, it just makes it everything look more real there are only small instances where I'm going to use motion blur and those are like special cases and another keyboard shortcut is let's say you want to just make this have a more natural ease in and ease out <clears throat> movement um, there's a lot I can go into with like easing in and easing out with keyframes but the basics to it is what you can do is you can just highlight your keyframes and hit F9 on your keyboard excuse me and now it's gonna have a nice ease in instead of having it be um, very hard and jagged and you can also do that by highlighting everything and going right clicking it and give, go to keyframe assistance and clicking on the ease in and there's stuff where you can get into the graph editor and just mess with that individually to get it precise but that's like a whole tutorial series in itself so basically if you're just getting started in after effects understanding why you would do this ease in is a very good place to start and then when you get more advanced you're going to go into the graph editor and mess with that so that's motion blur and now the next thing we need to talk about is the 3d layer switch now the 3d layer switch is pretty much what it is it's gonna make your layers 3d and that switch is right over here in the 3d cube right here so we just click that for our layers and now with position now that we have that clicked we see that a new value has come up so notice it's just X and Y but I click on the 3D layer switch and now a Z value has come up and what that really allows us to do is now we can edit the um, our layers in 3D so now if I change the Z value it's actually moving back or forward 
So this is not scale. Don't get it confused with scale. This is actually moving back and forth in space, not getting smaller and bigger. And um, so if I were to go to the rotation and rotate it. Now this wasn't here without the 3D layer switch because without a 3D layer switch, we can only do this because that's 2D. But now that we have the 3D layer switch on, we can do this and spin it in 3D. So if I turn it like this and I go to my position, I'm hitting P on my keyboard and I move and I move the uh, Z value. I can see that I'm I am not editing the scale. We're actually moving in Z space. So that just opens up another world for what you can do in After Effects because now you can make your stuff in 3D. So now you can do this. Whoa! Where'd you come from, buddy? And so that just opening, adding the 3D layer switch adds a new um, val adds new values to the position and the rotation and the scale as well. But 3D layers are just going to open up a new world and now you can have things actually move in Z space and have it move like it's just actually space there so it's not all flat. So it's good to turn on that 3D layer switch and just mess with the front, making it go front and back making it go in Z space, mess with the rotation, and make it look like it's actually in 3D, 3D so it's not flat. And so that's the basics with the 3D layer switch, and now we have pre-composing. Now pre-composing is really what's going to make um, After Effects less cluttered for you, because let's say you have a bunch of layers, like you have all this, and you're like, okay, and I'm just going to, here's another cool tip. You can actually change the layers of certain colors. So let's say all this red is going to mean, I just changed all those to orange. So all those orange layers, the orange colors, those are something different. Those are their own group. And I'm going to change these. I'm just clicking on this um, square right here and changing the color right there. I'm just going to change those to green. I'm going to change those to purple. So these are all their individual groups. And I'm like, all right, I don't want all this to be here. I want to kind of separate it so my main composition is less cluttered. Well, what you can do is you can highlight the things you want to pre-compose. So I want to pre-compose the purples. I just get all those highlighted. And I go to Control shift c And now this window is going to open up called Pre-Compose. And I can name this into what I want. So I'm going to call this Purple, purple Layers layers. I'm going to hit OK. And now a new pre-composition has been created. So I can do the same for the green. Green layers. Hit OK. Do the same for the orange. Control Shift C. Orange layers. Now a new pre-composition has been created. And that's really helpful because one, my main comp is less cluttered. And two, now that a new pre-comp has been created, now I can just move this. And it's looking kind of weird because I haven't hit the uh, collapse transformation key. So now everything is showing up. But now I can just move this and I'm moving everything in that purple, in that orange layer. I can do the same for the green layer. I can do the same for the purple layer. And we have this, but I'll just delete it. So it may be kind of hard to see what I did, but let's get deeper into it. So we have this orange layer and green and purple layer. So if I double click on it, I see that a new composition was created for all this. If I double click on this, Adobe After Effects created a new composition. So now we have a new composition and it's just the same thing as if we made a new composition up here. I'm going to go to composition settings and edit this. But this is our main one and all those pre-comp are in our main compositions. So just to kind of see what I did, I'm going to take all this. I'm going to just remove the keyframes, bring it down. I'm just going to separate these layers. Let me change the color of this to like... Na, 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 na. So if I go to the main one, now which one did I work with? I work with the orange. So if I take this orange composition and I just move this, now I'm moving everything in that composition because it's all pre-composed into this one composition. So you can really use this to make working with After Effects a lot easier and just less stressful because now I've just grouped all those layers and now I can easily just move them like this how I want and I can move all the ones in this layer like this all the ones in this layer like that like that it's just a lot easier instead of me messing with 
this with multiple layers all in one composition and it's less cluttered easier to navigate and we see them right here so if I want to just take this and drag it in here I can add more or I can just duplicate so that's pre-composing and pre-composing really just makes your helps um, like declutter declutterize if that's a word just makes your composition less cluttered and it helps you group things together so if you want to add an effect to an entire group but you don't want to add it you don't want to use an adjustment layer and have it affect everything else you can just pre-compose it go to effects um, color you can go to blur fast blur and now everything in that layer just that layer is going to be have a fast blur and to put it into perspective let me show you so I'm going to add a fast blur to this and now everything in this orange layer has a fast blur but there's no fast blur actually on the layers it's actually on the pre-composition that I created so I can just still mess with this how I want but now everything in that layer has a fast blur so if you can see the power with that and how it really makes um, it really just opens the door for a lot of cool things I mean if you can think about a cool way to use it and put it to use and it works so that's keyboard shortcuts, motion blur, 3D layer switch, and pre-composing. So my challenge to you is to take all those that you've learned and just make something out of it. Use the keyboard shortcuts to navigate After Effects, do a motion and enable the motion blur, and have that motion kind of move in 3D space. And then add a couple layers to your composition and then pre-compose it and add effects to this pre-composition kind of move the pre-composition with the group of layers in them and just work with it um, make something cool and I also challenge you to incorporate everything you've learned from the first video in this video and just keep adding it to a project and keep increasing and just make something new by yourself so thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you in the next one. In the next one, we're going to be covering animation presets, render settings, and render templates. And that's the final video. I hope you're learning a lot through this series. And I hope to see you on the third video. Peace.